Candy's Classic Game Shrine, everyone. With my birthday a few weeks away, I figured it'd only be fitting to review a game that had the same general birthday as me. So that game is going to be Bugs Bunny's Birthday Blowout for the NES. Let's see if this game still holds up today. As soon as you begin the game, you're greeted with a really catchy tune vaguely reminiscent of the Looney Tunes theme. After hitting start, you're then told how Bugs received an invite from his fan club to attend a party to celebrate his 50th birthday. It just so happens that his other Looney Tunes pals are jealous of the attention and set out to unleash themselves and an army of odd contraptions to stop Bugs from reaching the party. When starting a stage, you'll notice that it has a very Mario-like feel to it. You collect carrots instead of coins to earn 1-ups, kill the enemies, and move to the right towards your goal. Unlike in Mario, though, Bugs is always equipped with a mallet and is able to take many more hits. Another game this reminds me of is Tiny Toon Adventures by Konami, which is another fantastic NES game. The game will have you going through six stages, with four rounds per stage. Each round is filled with very strange and seemingly random enemies. According to the manual, these enemies are comets, boulder wells, Good soap boxes, evil soap boxes, ghosts, malicious mallets, poisonous frogs, walking time bombs, spring loaded weights, stoplight worms, jumping telescopic bullet sprinklers, and fireballs that look like roadkill versions of the Firefox logo. What the hell? Are these contraptions rejects from the Acme Corporation? At the end of every round, you face a mini boss, and on the fourth round of the stage, you face your main boss. Your bosses include Tweety, Daffy Duck, Foghorn Leghorn, Elmer Fudd, and many more iconic characters. I liked how a lot of the bosses had unique attacks and backgrounds based on their in-show traits. I felt it was a nice touch. There is a lot of variety in the level design in this game, and you might find yourself in meadows, the desert, a spooky castle, and so much more. Each round tends to be large enough where you can take different paths towards the same end goal, so each playthrough feels a little different. One mechanic that I found in the game to be a lot of fun was where the ground begins to move underneath you as if an earthquake is happening. This can be extremely disorienting, but it adds for a hell of a challenge. There's also similar instances where lightning will strike and causes the stage to go black, forcing you to have to remember what the round looked like before it was lit. Once you've beaten a round, as long as you've collected enough carrots, you'll be given an option to play a bingo-like minigame or a whack-a-mole minigame to earn more lives. The bingo minigame is fairly randomized. You just press a button to stop the spinning numbers, and if it's on your card, it gets marked off. Line up three or more in a row, and you get extra lives. The whack-a-mole game is fairly self-explanatory. You just move Bugs Bunny over the hole with the mole popping out and whack him with the mallet during the allotted time. The Whack-A-Mole minigame only happens once every four rounds. The ending of the game is a little anticlimactic in my opinion. You face Taz the Tasmanian Devil and whack the footballs back that he throws at you. Once you defeat him, you're taken to a cutscene where Bugs arrives at his party, only to be surprised to find that all of those same Looney Tunes characters, who moments ago tried to kill him, were there to celebrate his birthday. I found the game to be pretty enjoyable and somewhat easy for casual players to enjoy. The music is fun, cheery, and very fitting of the Looney Tunes name, which I feel added to the overall experience of the game. The game is colorful, and most of the sprite work is spot on to what the characters would have looked like in the cartoons. However, those enemy sprites, what were they thinking? I would have rather there been sentient anvils, rocket skates, giant slingshots, or other easily identifiable things instead of these generic enemies. The game isn't perfect, but you can usually find it for under $10, and at that price point, I highly recommend picking it up. You'll get a decent amount of replay value out of it. So that was my review of Bugs Bunny's Birthday Blowout for the NES. Let me know what you guys thought of the game and the video in the comments below, and until next time guys, take care. I'd like to give my Patreon shoutouts to the SideQuest Gamer, Michael Carter, and Barclay Crazy. Thank you so much for all your support.